we're back. Yes, this is episode twenty-two, right? Thirteen o'clock, episode twenty-two. Twenty-two. We're gonna we're gonna do one called "The Devil's Breath." Yeah. Woo. Yeah, I first heard about the Devil's Breath off of Vice. Yeah, and, that's probably where most people heard about this because Vice yeah. did a very uh did a very like well known documentary probably, but what was it two thousand seven? I want to say two thousand eight. Yeah, Something, it was a while back. Yeah, and I grew up in Brazil, and I'd never heard of the Devil's Breath. I was kind of surprised. Yeah, I grew up in São Paulo, Brazil. And, uh, you know, I had friends from across the spectrum, down at the street level and rich friends. And the ones at the street level, you know, I'm surprised I thought I would have heard of this drug, but I guess they don't use it in Brazil. Yeah. But it scared the crap out of me hearing about Well, some of the stories about it are very serious, especially the ones that were on Vice. And what we kind of wanted to do with this show is sort of try and sort out the, the, you know, the reality from from the legend. Right. Now, you know, nobody knows exactly, but it seems like there's a lot of stories about this drug that seem like they're kind of exaggerated. I'm not saying that it's not a scary drug, because it is. What what the devil's breath supposedly do, does is turns you into a basically a zombie, where you will do whatever a person says and not remember it when, when it wears off. And you don't, evidently you don't show any signs of being drugged. You seem totally lucid. You'll, uh, you'll get dosed with it. They'll say, let's go to your place. You're going to give us all your stuff. You'll even help them load up a truck and with all your shit. shit. You'll empty out your whole apartment and, uh, you'll even go up to the doorman and say, oh no, it's okay. I'm moving, you know? And then it wears off and you're like, man, my house is empty. Where's all my shit? Yeah. And uh, I, w- I saw that, and I was going like, man, that that's some really dangerous shit there. Is that true? And I was thinking, that can't that can't really be true because if a, if a drug was that power powerful, you'd think the CIA would be using it, right? So the thing about this drug, it has a very long and complicated history. Now, the main bone of contention and why it made such a big impact was specifically that because it was supposedly one very easy to administer you could just blow it in people's faces or hand somebody a piece of paper or a business card or that just been, wipe their face or with just it. wipe their face with it or hand somebody a business card or a piece of paper that had been saturated with it yeah. and immediately these people would be totally compliant yeah. they would do whatever you said some and, some people even reported that just the smell of it was enough to get you to become compliant yeah but man, you know, so we had, we we went and did an investigation. Yeah, to to and that's kind of the most controversial aspect of it. Yeah, I think we should probably talk about the network, though. Didn't you? Didn't you have something you wanted to say about uh, uh, the network? Oh well, we just wanted to remind everybody yeah. that the Project Entertainment Network, on which our audio version is hosted, uh, they still have a Patreon. Uh, on the YouTube video, I'll put a link. But other than that, just go to patreon.com. You know how it goes. And mm-hmm. say Project Entertainment Network. Throw them a couple bucks. They have some cool swag, t-shirts, you know, um, mm-hmm. postcards from the different podcasts and whatnot that you can get if you give a couple of dollars. So, you know, just do that. Plug that. Yeah, I also wanted to plug that Jenny has a really cool book coming out in probably the next couple months. When you say probably? Yeah, yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll be out like the early part of this year. Yeah, there, there's no other book like this. It's... It, it's, it's it's basically an encyclopedia of all of the poltergeist reports going all the way back from probably, what, 500 AD? Yeah, something like that. That's the oldest one. How many, it's like a hundred and something cases, right? Yeah. It's going to be really good. It's not ghosts. It's not a collection of ghost stories. These, these are actual classic poltergeist-type cases. You know, we're talking about, you know, all, along the lines of, you know, Carrie and... You know, basically, you know, uh, the fire starter. This is uh, when you say, well, each yeah. one's a little bit different, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I have a whole chapter in there on fire starting poltergeist. I have a chapter on right. stone throwing poltergeist. Right. But like I said, they, it's just pretty much every well known story and a few obscure ones, you right. know, going back to like the fifth or sixth century, you know, right. as far back as they've been reported. And I kind of, you know, go into like a little summary of each case. So yeah. I try to get as many cases as in there and then the end of the book is going to be kind of like a general parapsychological perspective on yeah. poltergeist activity so if you're into that kind of stuff the book's going to be called the unseen hand um it's also going to have a subtitle but i haven't figured out what it's going to be yet but right. it'll probably be out in a couple of months it'll it's probably good. be two months probably. it's going to be really good i don't yeah. think there's been a book like this written not for a while anyway no not for a while yeah okay uh, we I guess we can go ahead and start with the devil's breath then. Yeah, so we're talking about the devil's breath. 
Yeah. Um, it has actually goes under many names and I first heard of it. I didn't realize it was the same plant until we started doing the research for this podcast. Now, when I was in, now this must have been probably, I guess I was still in high school, so it must have been the late 80s. And I remember that there were these news stories going around that there was a teen trend. You know how fucking news in the 80s, it was always teen trends. They were always doing something crazy. And most of it was bullshit, I'm sure. Yeah. But, uh, But, you know, (laughs) but how I first heard of it. so Alcohol enemas and things like that. Yeah. All the kids are doing alcohol enemas Yeah, we're putting putting tampons in vodka, soaking them and sticking them up our butt. Yeah, like, like, who's doing that? I'm like, no one's doing that. Come on, stop it. Who would do that? I don't know. (laughs) But so here's the thing. So there, there were some news stories going around when I was a kid that people were taking the flowers of what we call angel's trumpet. Because we don't, I don't think they grow wild in Florida, but a lot of people do have them ornamentally because the flowers are very pretty. Like, so a lot of people have those trees in their yards. And I actually, I think a, a neighbor of ours had a tree with angel's trumpet on it. But um, apparently these teens, those crazy teens, they were picking the flowers and infusing them like into a tea mm-hmm. and drinking it as a hallucinogen. Okay. Now... Not that I hung out with a bunch of druggies. I hung out with some druggies, but like I did not know anybody that did that. And honestly, like after I found out this was the same drug and stuff like that, the drug that comes from this flower, they're like very, very few people use it recreationally because the high is so unpleasant. It's a bad trip. Because the effects are so unpleasant. So they said like a lot of people are not using it. And for it's that. called scopolamine. Scopolamine is yeah. the main alkaloid that's right. in this flower and it comes from what they call it it grows wild in colombia mm-hmm. and uh it's actually called the drunken binge tree okay. <laughs> yeah and um it's it's actually uh it's related to deadly nightshade henbane um it definitely is poisonous no one's saying that um although it does have some legitimate medical uses yeah now, scopolamine, uh, it's also known as hyacine. It um, was actually isolated by a German scientist in 1880. It's always some Germans coming up these weird drugs. I what know, is man. up with that? Well, they didn't come up with it. He oh, just, okay. He just, right. you know, discovered that that was the compound right. that was causing these effects. Okay. And I just got to blame the Germans. Okay. <laughs> I love, the, <laughs> Every, love the Germans. Everything right. is the Germans' fault. Yeah. Fucking Germans. Yeah. Just kidding. We love you, Germans. Yeah. But, um... So he isolated in about 1880. Now, its first use was actually um, to induce labor or to, um, you know, kind of take away the pain of labor. Now, evidently, the doctor that discovered it, he noticed that when he gave it to women in labor, that they would start telling the truth or something. It's like, I'm not really sure. Like, how did you know it was the truth? Maybe you started um, asking them some some pretty uh, spicy questions, and they're they're fessing up. Maybe maybe, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. He didn't really specify. Oh man, need the babes love this one. <laughs> <laughs> so then they started thinking, well, maybe it would work as a truth serum. Right. So it actually was experimented with as a truth serum in the 20s yeah. and 30s. And I think later on, I think the kind of the communist government in Czechoslovakia was it's, using it as a truth serum. Yeah, to get people to confess to crimes that they didn't commit. Yeah. I even think that they uh, they accused Joseph Mangala Mangala as of, using... As you, but that was debunked. Well, it, it's unsubstantiated. Right? unsubstantiated. It could be true. It was just rumored. I don't think that, Mangala was interested in scopolamine. Probably not. But the problem with it as a truth serum, which I think even, and I think this is even on the CIA website that American police and the CIA had experimented with a little bit, so they did admit it. Um, but the problem with it is that it's also a hallucinogen. So you don't really know if what they're telling you is true or if people are just making shit up. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I think I mentioned before, it actually does have legitimate uh medical uses seasickness and stuff like that yeah like if you've ever it's like real small doses yeah if you've ever worn one of those patches to keep you from getting uh motion sickness or seasickness that's what's in there it's scopolamine it's a low dose and um it's also used to treat parkinson's disease um anti-nausea like how some people get sick from anesthesia like before surgery they'll give it to you to keep you from getting sick so it does have some legitimate medical uses however in high doses it is some nasty ass shit. Okay. And it will 
actually kill you. Mm -hmm. The bone of contention is whether it takes your free will away. Yeah. Does it make you a zombie? Does it make you a zombie? I mean, now, evidently, they even said that Mesoamericans, you know, like uh, uh, the Maya, yeah. that they would give scopolamine, scopolamine to human sacrifices. Or like uh, when a king dies, his uh, wives and his consorts all were given scopolamine and they would walk down into a tomb and be buried alive. Right. That, 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 like or, it would make them more compliant. Yeah, yeah or, or it would make you, yeah, willingly lay there and get your heart cut out. That kind of thing. Right. You know, but, and then that's, that's, that's a serious claim. Yeah. Could, could you really give somebody scopolamine and tell them to, hey, lay here while we cut your heart out? All right. Yeah. I don't know. Why not? I, I kind of doubt it. I think that if, if a drug were that powerful, it would be far more popular. Especially with intelligence agencies. You capture a guy and you give him that and use it as a truth serum. Or use it to uh, to execute a political enemy. You get, yeah, hey, you drive could... your car into this wall, you know. Yeah, Just you'd think they'd be using it everywhere. Yeah, you would think so. Now, the main, uh, the main use for it, and I don't think this is in any dispute. Most of the cases that are reported of criminal gangs using it, which is pretty much the only people that use it. Because like I said, recreationally, it's not fun. So most people don't take it recreationally. In Colombia, Ecuador, um, places like that, which is where the tree grows wild. Evidently, there are whole criminal gangs. Down there, they call it Burundanga. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's also called Devil's Breath. They call it Angel's Trumpet up here at the flower. But it's the same, it's the same plant. Um, so these criminal gangs will synthesize the shit into a powder. It looks like cocaine. And they will give it to uh, women and rape them, or they will give it to men and rob them. Yeah. So I don't think that that's in dispute. That does happen. Like these gangs, like they, you know, a guy will be at a brothel. Um, you know, he'll be approached by a prostitute. She will put some of the scopolamine in his drink. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he won't remember anything. Like, she'll give, she'll take all his money and, and leave him on a park bench somewhere and no one will remember right. what happened to hey, him. Why don't we give him some tales? Let's give him some street legends about this. Okay. Now, Tell us some stories. Now, on the Vice documentary, yeah. they actually talked to a few people that apparently had been victims of this particular drug. Um, there was one guy on there who, uh, he went to, it was a brothel or a nightclub or something like that. And he was approached by two women. He was partying there with his friend or whatever. And evidently the women put scopolamine in his drink. <clears throat> and then he started to forget things. Now he woke up the next day or yeah. whatever it was on a park bench. Beaten. He was beaten up. And he found that most of his money or all of his, all money, his money was gone. had been taken out of his bank account. Mm -hmm. All his credit cards were gone. All his wallet was gone. Everything was gone. And he didn't really remember what had happened to him. Yeah. So <clears throat> now apparently there was footage of him yeah. taking his money out of the ATM. Yeah. And he said that the girls that were with him were with him, but they were out of the, out of the camera. In right. In other words, they were off camera. Right. Yeah. So like I said... He appeared to be taking his money out willingly. willingly. Yeah. But he says he doesn't remember doing that. Of course, yeah. he was super drunk as well. Right. Like, because he had been drinking all night with the girls. So. God, this tank is loud. Yeah, what the I know. hell? Well, it's, an RD, it's, a, it's an RDA, you know? They're loud. That's okay. Yeah. Everybody knows what they it is. They make lots of vapor. <laughs> we had to open the door because I was afraid I'd set the smoke alarm off. It still might. That would yeah, be exciting. Yeah, that has happened. I can't make enough vapor to actually set a smoke alarm off. That would be hysterical if that went off on here. That would be funny. I'd leave, <laughs> I'd leave it in the show, too. Well, yeah, of course. Everybody would be, everybody be laughing at me. Because <laughs> they had people in the comments, is that vaping? What's he doing? You know? And then like, some of the vapors are like, hey, what what, what e-liquids do you like? You, know? you should have said, no, you weren't vaping. It's like, no, he's just Darth Vader. No, yeah, yeah. That's just my respirator. Yeah, he's Darth Vader back I then. get nervous. I start vaping. Yeah. We're all getting off topic. Off topic. That's okay. All right. So anyway, <laughs> so, and you know, they also had the Vice documentary. They also had um, a prostitute. They interviewed her and she said that she willingly admitted that she used it all the time. Yeah. Um, to, steal to steal money from her Johns, to steal things from various people. Now she said that she administered it by putting it 
like smearing it on paper and then smearing it on people's noses. Yeah, she said she did it to an old lady and she had a heart attack. Yeah. But I didn't really believe her. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm Growing sure. up in Brazil, you understand that, you know, that the culture there, especially kind of at the street level, they like, they like to grandstand. They like to tell stories, you know, and they'll, they'll, uh, uh they'll exaggerate a lot to, to, you know, it's kind of like a sign of their power. You know what I mean? So I don't know how, I think it's lies, a lot of and it, exaggeration. That's what I mean. That's why it's so hard to kind of get to the bottom of it because, the drug is actually dangerous and it does have particular effects, but I don't know if it's quite as scary because here's the thing. It's like vice might have kind of started it off by calling it the world's scariest drug. And there were all these kind of big deal articles about it. And like I said, it just kind of reminded me of back in the old days when they were talking about, Oh, these kids and they're making tea out of angels trumpets and they're getting, they're getting high off it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it does seem like it's kind of, Maybe some exaggeration there. Yeah, you know, they had a drug dealer telling a story about a friend of his who got dosed with it that kind of rang true with me. He said that he had a real high tolerance towards drugs, so he got dosed with it and it didn't affect him, so they kept dosing him until eventually he just died. Yeah. And it never really, he never really yielded to it. Right. You know, he had to give him a lethal dose to get an effect. <laughs> So that maybe that might account for some of the inconsistencies in these stories. Yeah, that's some, true. Some yeah. people report remembering what they did, and other people report that they can't remember anything that yeah, they did. Yeah, because the one girl that they interviewed, um, she was apparently given it by a stranger. He, you know, he was asking for directions or whatever, and she like took him somewhere, and he bought her some juice or something, and she drank it, and apparently was dosed with it. Now she claimed. That she's like, I happily went to my apartment and handed over all my money and all this other kind of stuff. But she apparently remembered doing that. Yeah. But see, the strange thing about it is that the drug itself, it does cause memory loss. Yeah. It's it's like a date rape drug. It's like a roofie. Um, it, you know, it will make you not remember shit that happened to you. So you'll wake up the next day and go, what the fuck did I do? You know what I mean? But... The weird thing is that some people's stories about it, they do kind of remember <coughs> shit. So I don't know if some of these stories are kind of exaggerated or kind yeah. of, or if people's physiology just means that maybe they kind of do remember some shit. They just, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, I did this, but I don't know why I did that or something like that. It could uh, be. Well, let's try to tease it apart. So, and making things more complicated too, is that there are stories about the drug that are pretty much certainly urban legends. Um, back in 2013, there were a lot of urban legends going around and, you know, they turned up. Usually it happened in Texas or Missouri. Um, <laughs> that, Florida man. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't Florida man this time. It wasn't Florida man this time. It was Texas man this okay. time. So if it's okay. not, if it's not Florida, it's usually Texas or Arizona. There's some yeah, fucked up We live in Florida. On. We know all about Florida man. Yeah. Florida man. We should yeah, do a whole here. show about Florida yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> People are insane. I'm lucky there. I haven't turned up as Florida man. Oh, you will one of these days. No, I'm sure. Sorry. Okay. But um, so there were some stories going around that there were gangs in the U.S. that apparently were saturating business cards with scopolamine. Yeah. And then, you know, the story would go, a lady went to a gas station and she was at the pump and this guy came up to her and said, oh, I have a painting business. If you ever need any painting, he yeah. handed her a business card and then he gets in a car and then she gets back in her car and starts to drive. And then she notices that these guys are following her in a car and then she starts to feel super funny and she's dizzy and everything like that. Yeah. And in the urban legend, nothing bad happens to her. She just pulls into a driveway and says, hey, I feel like shit. And then the guys drive off. Right. But... You know, the the legend is that the paper was saturated with scopolamine. Right. And the, that the smell of it got to her and just touching it was enough. Right. Now, see, but the problem with that is that a lot of medical professionals or people or toxicologists or people who study this kind of thing say that you can't get that bad of a dose just by touching something right. that's been soaked in it. Yeah. So... Here is kind of where a lot of the controversy arises because one of the big things apparently in Colombia, and actually this happened um, in Paris as well. There was a case in Paris a couple years ago where apparently this criminal gang, it was two Chinese women and another guy whose race they didn't say, um, 
were... I think they said it was a Chinese crime syndicate, so okay. they must have all been Chinese. All right. So, okay. So they were apparently going around blowing this stuff into the faces of old people, mm-hmm. and then when they kind of were zonked out, they would take all their shit. All right. But I'm not super sure, like, if that was the Capone, if they were positive that that's what it was. Apparently, they did it a bunch of times before they caught him, and they said that that's what it was. Right. But I'm not sure. I now, mean, now, in those stories, were they going to the ATMs and and cleaning themselves out as zombies? Like, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you all my money. Here's, you know, I'll enter my PIN number. Yeah. Was that I, happening, I or think were they that losing was... consciousness, and they were just taking their purses? What was... What? I, yeah, see, that's the thing. I'm not real sure. Like, if the reports didn't really say okay, the reports that they were, to, uh, yeah, they just said they were robbed. Like, yeah, they were, were so robbed that's, of their money. That's so, vague. You know, some of them may have been taken to an ATM, and, but see, okay. that's the thing where, where that's why I kind of wanted to do this subject because there's so much myth and legend about it. Right. Because, like I said, anything, even like a lot of alcohol, even roofies, anything like that, I've been, I've been dosed at a nightclub before. Okay, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was Rohypnol. I don't know if it was uh, GHB or whatever. But, you know, what what happened in my experience was I was there. I was on my first drink. I don't even think I finished my first drink. And then all of a sudden I was like, I'm really sleepy. And then I just passed out. Yeah. And I just hit the floor. I had to be carried out of the club. You were married at the time. Yeah. So my yeah. husband and was there. And not to me. Yeah. 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 This, was, this was a long time ago. Right. And um, so I was there with my ex-husband and, mm-hmm. and a friend of ours. And so they had to carry me out. They had to put me in the car. And then, you know, on the way home, like an hour later, I woke up and I was vomiting all over myself. Right. But I didn't do anything. I was just asleep. I was unconscious. Right. And... It was the boobs. What? They saw the boobs and they had to dust you. I guess so. (laughs) Oh, that's cruel. It is. You're so mean. I know. He's so mean to me. Yeah, it's all fun and games. Yeah, okay. So... Like I said, I don't know. This stuff, scopolamine, will zonk you out. Yeah. It will make you lose consciousness. It will kill you if you have a high enough dose. Yeah. The question is, will it make you walk around like a normal person and do whatever anybody wants you to do after somebody just blows it in your face? Yeah, that's the legend. Is it true? That's what I mean. I don't know. Because I don't know... If just blowing it in someone's... I mean, I feel like... And some other toxicologists have said this online. Mm -hmm. You would pretty much have to ingest it or like snort it up your nose Mm -hmm. for that to have any effect. I mean, if somebody blew it in your face and your mouth was wide open and you swallowed a bunch of it, maybe. Yeah. But just blowing it on somebody or just swiping it on someone's skin, I don't see that that would be potent enough. Yeah, because they're in the Vice documentary... There's a young prostitute. She's what, 21, 22? Yeah. And she just said that all she had to do was wipe it across somebody's face. Yeah. That's what she was saying. Or she and that would... was enough to turn them into a zombie. And yeah. And in one case, she wiped it across an old lady's face in an attempt to rob her. And she fell over dead, I think. Uh, in, well, she just, she just said she had, had a heart, heart attack. attack. She didn't say if she, she died. She didn't say or she not. died, right. And that's. I'm trying to analyze her, you know, because I understand Spanish. I speak Portuguese fluently. And it, it, it's very close. And I know South American culture. And I think she was grandstanding. I think she was grandstanding. She might have been. Yeah, and because she, she was also trying to get a little bit of a pity party for her going on about how hard her life was. Yeah. I wasn't totally buying what she was saying. I don't think that's enough. Because the guys that... Because guys that I believed... You know, their stories of dosing people, they said they had to put it in people's drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, Or they had to put it in a cigarette and had to smoke it. Yeah. Which, that's totally believable. Right. Because, like I said, I've been dosed before, just a little bit in a drink, and it knocked me the fuck out. And in that same documentary, there's a uh, a funny drug dealer, a street-level drug dealer. The guy's hilarious. That guy seems super fun. Yeah, 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 he's hilarious. He goes in to go buy scopolamine, and when he comes back, he's totally coked out, and he's... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's hilarious if you like, haven't seen it you yeah. guys you guys he's just, totally coked out it's he, worth it just for that guy and he opens up the little package of uh, scopolamine all right and he goes you smell it you smell it oh you know we gotta ventilate the car we got and i guess no, all, no, we'll no, all get high no, yeah no, we'll, yeah we'll all be zombies and then he goes no 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 don't worry it's not enough it's not enough yeah so 
you're kind of seeing its legendary effects. Hey, just smelling it enough. But then he goes, no, 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 don't worry. It's not enough. Yeah. So he said it was airborne. At yeah, one so point it's airborne that. now. You know, so right watch there, out, you guys. Right there, you see, you see, kind of like the the street legend. Yeah, that just smelling it is enough. Yeah, but then he backs off of that. No, nah, don't worry, it's not enough. It's yeah, not enough. and you can see how that shit kind of happens. Right, and they're scared of it. They're yeah. scared of it so much that where they're handling it like it's plutonium. Or fucking anthrax or yeah. something like that. And he that. did say that. He said, yeah, he said it was it's guy, like anthrax. It's worse than anthrax, he said. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I, well, I don't know. Come on, well, what's know. the truth? Yeah. You know, what's well, the truth? Well, no. the second part of the show, we'll try to get down more of the truth. Okay, well, you want to take a break now? Because we're like it's about, about to time for it. Okay, for, so for we're going to take a break. We will be right. back in just a few minutes. Watch out. There's a new terror taking over kitchens around the world. Thrills, chills, mad cooking skills. It Cooks, a weekly podcast brimming with recipes, tips, food finds, seasonal specials, and guests galore. Hosted by horror author Amber Fallon, hey, that's me, a foodie with over 20 years experience cooking, baking, and generally making a nuisance of herself. You've watched Food Network, you've read cookbooks, but nothing can prepare you for It Cooks, coming to a device near you. Subculture Corsets and Clothing is our favorite store for unusual clothing, shoes, and accessories. They offer a wide selection of men's and women's clothing at great prices. Subculture also offers a cool selection of shoes and accessories. Steampunk, gothic apparel, retro, corsets, and so much more at Subculture Corsets and Clothing. Check out Subculture online at subculturecorsets.com. That's subculturecorsets.com. Make sure you use the discount code 13 o'clock for a 10% discount subculturecorsets.com or visit their store in Jacksonville, Florida just off I-95 Ladies and gentlemen Project Entertainment Network presents The Mondo Method Introducing the mentor He's the greatest manager of all time Mondo Guerrero Parts unknown Up and coming superstar The Great Buddha Okay, so the names are really Armand, Rosamelia, and Chuck Buddha an old man Armand is going to teach Booker Snapper Chuck how to write a book. And maybe you too while they're at it. With marketing morsels from Aaron Sweet Amahari. Exclusively on Project Entertainment Network. Real and imaginary, and I write about them all. Paranormal nonfiction, horror fiction, the Rochdale House of Fire, the Whispers, Mammoth Mountain Poltergeist, the Associated Villains, Monsters, Red Menace, the, the Five Tenebrous Bellwether. Go to www.jennyashford.com or search Amazon for the Jenny Ashford author page. And we're back. Yes. Talking about The Devil's Breath. The Devil's Breath, the world's most dangerous drug yeah scariest drug in the world yeah it's the we're gonna cut your we're gonna give this to you and you'll climb up to the top of an aztec temple and we will cut your heart out and you'll love it awesome the, the, let's do that it. drug it's that let's drug do is it. it true see i don't know that's where that's where well we should know because we've done the research well i know but see the experts don't know even the experts don't know like okay. I said, there's because there's so much myth and legend built up around this, uh-huh. and because that there is truth at the bottom of it. Like I said, sca- like I said, scopolamine, which comes from this flower, is a very powerful substance. Mm. It will make you unconscious. It will make you not remember shit. Yeah. It will make you hallucinate. Yeah. If taken in the right dose, does it make you? A zombie, though, and here's where. And actually, this is funny because we we were uh, we had some friends over last night, and they were asking what our topic was today. So we were talking to them about it, and uh, our friend Dimitri said exactly the same thing that I was thinking. That this whole blowing shit in their face and turning people into zombies. I was like, serpent and the rainbow. Yeah. 
And so I'm wondering if people are conflating those two things. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, um, you know, I'm sure most of you are familiar. Serpent and the Rainbow was based, uh, you know, the movie was a horror movie, but it was based on the anthropological studies of Wade Davis. I saw it when I was a kid in high school. Yeah. I didn't like it. Oh, I did. Yeah, a lot of people liked it. I thought it was a good My movie. My friends liked it, but I watched it and I go, man, that movie sucks. <laughs> There's just something about it I didn't like. It didn't, it didn't you, do anything for me. Like you don't I, like anything. No, anything. I, I like stuff. It's just that that movie didn't do yeah. anything for me. I liked it. Okay. But um, the movie was obviously highly exaggerated, um, but it is based on real research that this guy did. However, you know, yes, there is a powder that's poisonous like that. It's, it comes from the blow. It comes from a blowfish and it's mixed with other things. Um, but in that movie... It was the same kind of thing. Like these, you know, voodoo doctors, you know, witch doctor, whatever you call them. Um, they witch were, doctor. yeah, they were going around. It's not a witch doctor. I don't know what the fuck they are. Yeah. But um, in the movie, they were going around blowing this powder in people's faces and it was putting them into that weird catatonic mm-hmm. kind of state. So I don't know if people are conflating the scopolamine thing mm-hmm. with the serpent and the rainbow thing, which was actually fictional. Right. That now. That zombie drug that they use, the blowfish poison, that is a neurotoxin, um, and it can cause catalepsy. Mm-hmm. But I, as in this case, I don't think that they you can get a high enough dose just blowing it at somebody. Right. Because so much of it like diffuses out into the air, you right. wouldn't really get much of it. You know what I mean? It's not like it can just land on your skin. You're like, oh man, I'm fucked up. Right. Like, I don't think the dosage would be high enough. You would have to give it to somebody. They would have to drink it. Or snort it. Well, do, do we have another legend or at least a story about it uh, that we, we can tell the audience of exactly what happened to a person? Or, well, or are they all just too vague? That's what I mean. It seemed like most of the stories that were in the Vice documentary were kind of vague stories. I noticed that too. And, you know, the one girl, they were talking to these girls at the beginning, like in a restaurant. And she was like, oh, my uncle was a cab driver. Yeah. And somebody gave him scopolamine. But really, all that happened in that story was he died. Right. And I'm like, so she didn't really know that many details about it. And She never said that he became a zombie. Right. That that he did whatever they asked him. And honestly, really, there were only one or two things in there. Where people actually said, oh, I, there was proof that I actually, somebody saw me right. doing stuff, like helping these criminals clean my house out or, or right. doing bad things or whatever. So <clears throat> is it possible? Like I said, it does. The drug can make you suggestible. Passive, passive and suggestible. Right. They said it, it affected your uh, 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 amygdala. Amygdala, yeah. And which is that it controls your aggression and fight or flight response. So it probably, right. it probably suppresses that. So you don't want to fight back. Yeah. Is one of the things that happens. But the question is, would it make you do something that you wouldn't normally do if you had all your faculties? Well, are there any feelings of, of, of euphoria from Not it? that oh. I ever saw. Okay. I mean, really, like I said, if it caused any kind of euphoria, then people would take it for fun. And apparently right. no one does that. Okay. I mean, even in Colombia, where it grows wild, and even though they were talking to this drug dealer, and pretty much everyone they talked to down there, it's like, why would you take that for fun? We have coke, we have weed. It's right. like this shit is no fun. It makes right. you violently ill. It's always it's a bad trip. It lasts for a long time. The trip yeah. can last for a day or two. Right. You know, like uh, several days, and it's not pleasant. Hmm. So they said no one really does it for fun. Does it lower your inhibitions? Not so much. I mean, that might be something to do with it. But like I said, a lot of things do that. Alcohol does that. Right. I mean, yeah, and you might do dumb shit on alcohol. You wouldn't do when you were sober. But, I mean, how drunk would you have to be for somebody to go, hey, give me all your money out of the ATM? And you go, sure. All right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't don't know. Maybe some people might. I don't know. You've seen me drunk. I remember everything that happened. Yeah. So So I don't really know. Like I said, maybe some people are just naturally more suggestible than others. Yeah. And so maybe it works like that on them. Right. But maybe if you were more a more strong-willed person, it would, wouldn't really work on you because you'd be like, nah, nah, I'm not going to do that. Well, that one drug dealer said that they had d- did it to his brother. Wasn't it his brother? Yeah. And then it just killed his brother. Yeah. Because he it was either his brother or his friend. I can't remember the I exact. think it was his roommate. His I think roommate? I said it was his roommate. 
So they just kept giving it to him, and it didn't didn't have any effect on him until it until it killed him. Because if if this drug was could really do that mm-hmm. and could really do it um, reliably, reliably, then you'd think that fucking terrorist organizations all over the place would yeah. fucking use it and they weaponize like it. Yeah, yeah, of course. So. So I don't know where the truth lies. I'm really, it seems like almost all of the stories about it come from Colombia or Ecuador. Right. Um, couple stories, like I said, there was one uh, that came out in the paper in France. I think that was 2013, 2014, um, about a gang that uh, were doing that to old people. And I think there have been maybe a story in Thailand, Vietnam, uh, something like that. But there haven't really been any confirmed cases in the U.S. of it happening. Okay. Um, there's been some urban legends. And like I said, there was an urban legend when I was a kid about, you know, kids making it into tea. Right. Um, but like I said, I didn't really know anybody that was doing that. And it's funny, we were talking about it this morning and I said, this might be a kind of thing where I don't remember if you guys, one of our very early shows, probably the second one that we did about the satanic panic. And I said, and I think the media coverage of the devil's breath is kind of along those same lines where... You know, just like in the satanic panic, you know, are there creepy serial killers out there that maybe will draw a pentagram on something? Yeah, it does happen. Mm -hmm. You know, is there an organized cabal of these people Mm -hmm. going around, you know, sacrificing babies and all that? No. Yeah. Using women as breeders. Right. So I feel like this might be that same kind of situation Mm -hmm. where, you know, is scopolamine dangerous? Yes. Are, are gangs using it? Yes. Are gangs using it? Yes. Yeah. They do use it. They put it people's drinks they, to rob them, to rape them, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, do, but the thing is, I, I don't know. I don't even know if there's, a, you know, a distinction to be made. It's bad enough, mm-hmm. like, getting dosed with a drink and then waking up and all your shit is gone. Right. Um, or finding out you've been sexually assaulted. Um. You know, but the question is whether you were complicit in your own victimization. Right. That's what the I guess is this. That's why it made such a big impact and like why everyone says it's so scary. Not just that you've been rendered unconscious and people are doing horrible shit to you and you don't remember it. Right. But that you were going along with it. Right. And I think that's probably why people are afraid of it. Right. And the funny thing is in the Vice documentary, the two guys like, and I actually read um, an interview with the one of the guys that um, that would, went down there. And he said that before they did the documentary, mm-hmm. like he was all jazz. He's like, yeah, I'm going to try this shit. I'm going to give it to my friends and make them do all kind of stupid shit. It'll be hilarious. Right. <laughs> and then when he got down there and started hearing all the stories about it, they actually scored, if you see the documentary, they actually scored some and they, they put their little, their little face masks on and stuff yeah. to like, and they're <laughs> open it all carefully. Like it's going to blow up or something. Yeah. And, uh, and they end up just kind of flushing it down the toilet. Yeah. They got, they got, they chickened out. Yeah. Because he's like, Oh, you know, I heard all these stories and suddenly it wasn't funny anymore. Right. Like, I'm like, I don't know. It could still be funny, but <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like giving it to your friends and be like, do this, do that. Come on. It'd be hysterical. You can put it on YouTube. But uh, I think that's kind of what he was thinking when he went down there. But then when he, actually got down there he's like oh maybe yeah. it wouldn't be so funny <laughs> but um because it might actually kill you or it might actually make you do all these horrible things that you don't want to do but like i said it's kind it's kind of like i don't know it, and i feel like the media doesn't help because it's it's kind of like you know they're they're having all these headlines world scariest drug zombie drug all this kind of stuff and i feel like that's not helping because in a way, and I think, like I said, I said this on the Satanic Panic show too, and I thought about this when the when the news was going off about Angel's Trumpet and all these teens making tea out of it. I said, you know what? Probably no one was doing it before, but now they are because right. you talked about it. Yeah, or at least <laughs> it's like it's like that was like they're old... making a trend out of something that wasn't one. Yeah, that, that's like old school clickbait. I didn't, you yeah. know, I knew a lot of guys that were drinking, you know, when we were young, we just drink our asses off. They yeah. weren't doing, they weren't doing alcohol enemas. No, I they don't know a up. single person. They were made that up. That did that. Yeah. That seemed like, that went around like probably a couple years ago. Somebody I realized it was possible and they just wrote a story about it. Yeah. Or Maybe it's like. Maybe one guy did it. That's the thing. One yeah. guy did it like, yeah. you know what? I bet somebody saw it on like Jackass or something. Yeah. <laughs> Something and then, like that. you know, somebody did it and then suddenly, you know, one guy does it and then suddenly the news picks it up and it's a wacky story. So suddenly it's a trend. Everyone's yeah. doing it. And like I said, 
the more the news brings it up, well, yeah, people are going to try it then. Oh, yeah. they think, oh, let's all do this. That yeah. sounds like a cool idea. You but, know, not but as, me. But... As far as devil Devil's Breath goes, based on everything I could find about it and everything I've heard about it and the, the testimony, I think basically all it is is it's something similar to like a roofie. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be reliable. Some people are going to have a high tolerance and a resistance to it. Other people will uh, be roofied and they'll be robbed. And they may go along with it to a certain extent, but it's just because they're passive. And maybe they've also, they've also been kind of affected by the propaganda of their And that kind of gets back to what I was just right. saying, is that sometimes the media makes the right. story it's like it's you know right. it's like it's a snake eating its own tail could be that someone comes under the effect of it and they they uh they go man i've been hit by the devil's breath i'm gonna do whatever they say yeah and they just kind of go along that's how with it works it. and they are in you know intoxicated so they just you know yeah they fall victim to it almost kind of like a voodoo curse mixed with a drug and right. voodoo curses only work if you if you believe if them. you believe them and they uh, do work right because, you know, it's just like the placebo effect. Yeah, like a placebo. Yeah. The weird thing about the placebo effect, though, it's like you would think that it only works if you don't know you're being given a placebo. No, even if you know it's a placebo, it's still right. It's kind of the same thing where if you tell somebody, "Look, LSD makes you go crazy." Yeah. All right, you will lose your mind and you will you'll never be normal again. And you, then you give somebody LSD and that they. The fear and that the fear of the LSD and uh, uh, them expecting to lose their mind, they'll have a really bad trip. Yeah, and you know that's why very kids. That's, if kinda... that's why it's very important if you're going to do LSD, go into a positive mindset. Because otherwise, <laughs> no, no, no. otherwise you're going to oh, be in big no. trouble. Just saying. <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. They're bad. <laughs> but Don't do drugs. I, I think that I think that's. That's a big factor of it. It might be. Is the legend behind Devil's Breath. And maybe that's uh, why. You, is affecting the people who get dosed with it. Because it does seem like, I mean, because it came to the attention of Vice and everything like that. I mean, apparently mm -hmm. there is a lot of street legends about it. Yeah. So like you said, it might, it might be like a feedback loop where right. people are getting dosed with it and yeah. then expecting. Right. You know, chances are, I think if you were to dose somebody with Devil's Breath. In the in evidently the proper way to dose somebody, which is put it in a in a in a drink, in a or, drink, or, that's or, the put, most it, common. or yeah. put it in a cigarette. Yeah. All this wipe in the face and blowing powder, I don't buy it. Uh, even if you if you were to dose somebody in the U.S. with that, and this person had no idea what devil's breath is, it's not part of the culture. I guarantee you, they would just get sick. Yeah, they would just get They'd sick, or they would sick. just fall asleep. Fall fall asleep or lose consciousness. It'd be something like that, probably. Yeah, because we don't really have. You know, well, other than the Vice documentary. There's no cultural expectation. There's no cultural expectation right. of how it's going to make you behave. Right. And like I said, I don't think it would be any different. Now, it might make you, might make you placid. You know? Yeah, but other drugs do that, too. Other drugs would do that, too. Alcohol so, can do that, so it too. So it wouldn't, wouldn't be any different than being roofied. Right. So right. like I said, I think the, the problem with it is not that it, not that it doesn't do what it's purported to do, because it does. You know, they know that chemical. They know right. what effects it has. Right. But... One, everyone's physiology is different. Everyone's yeah. expectations are different. You know, you don't know how, how it's going to affect you. The alcohol affects people differently. Roofies affect people differently. Right. So I don't think there's any distinctive difference between it and any of the other drugs that they use for similar purposes. We can tell my story. We went out to a club, Jenny and I, one time, and I had maybe two drinks, and I got very violent, very yeah. aggressive. I started yelling and I had to be taken out of there. And it was the only time that ever happened. Yeah. And I think I drank, I think somebody dosed my drink and they were, and I think you were actually the target. Yeah. I think they got the drinks mixed up. Yeah. That was, how long ago was that? Um, gosh, that was probably six years ago. Yeah. And we think we know who did it, but we're not going to mention any names. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, uh, that's the thing. I thought, because I had never seen you act that way before. Yeah. And I thought it was just because uh, we'd gone to see a band. We'd gone to see yeah. a band that I really like, and Tom does not care for them. But, you know, he went with I me. I like some of their songs. Yeah, he yeah. went with me because he's a trooper. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah, we didn't have that many drinks because the drinks were expensive, I remember. So we didn't really buy that many. Yeah. And, um, and as the show went on, 
he was just getting I more. I started getting he really started angry. He started getting angry. He was yelling at the band. And, yeah, he was, yeah. and I was and getting. I was in the back. I wasn't even in the front. Yeah, yeah. We were, was and people were like turning around looking well, at him. What the hell's wrong with this guy? And I was getting really embarrassed. Yeah, and and I, I, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. And, you know, and yeah. I was really upset because, like, I'd never yeah. got to see that band before. And I remember right. I was like, I remember this was before we lived together. Yeah. And I remember me getting to your apartment and just going, get out! <laughs> get <laughs> yeah. out of my fucking car! Yeah. And I don't you know. Dick. I, don't, I don't know why I got mad. And I had never seen you like that no, before, and I had no. never seen you like that so, since. So I, I, there's no telling what that was in that drink, but it didn't affect me as intended. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, you just got really. Angry. I just got mad. I wanted to fight. I thought yeah. you were having like a PTSD episode. Yeah. No. Is what I thought. I kind of thought so at the time too, but then I looked back and I said, "No, that's not what that was." Yeah. Yeah, it was. That might have been, but it yeah, was a like. Weird night. But um. We live down. You know, this is downtown downtown Orlando, and this is. And in that period, that was happening to a lot of people. Yeah. Mostly girls. Yeah. Because yeah. like I said, I've been dosed um, two times. Mm-hmm. The first time was probably eight years ago. Yeah. Because like, like I said, I was still married eight, nine years ago. And, you had to um, keep your eye on your drink. You did, yeah. Back in those and days. And I think I suspect, I didn't know the person that um, that dosed me, um, but I think I know who it was. Right. Like, because I I knew, like, there was a friend of a friend was, like, hanging around. Yeah, and all it takes is one or two bad apples. And remember, the cops, the cops were investigating a dosing that happened in the bar next to our bar that, that yeah. we, hang, we hang out at. Yeah. Remember that? And they were trying to go through all the bartenders and try to figure out who this was. Yeah. And that bartender over there at that other club said that it was happening on a regular basis and that they had a suspect. Yeah. And, you know. It does happen. I don't think, it doesn't seem like it's um, super common anymore. All right. Um, I know, I mean, you know, the the bar we go to is mostly a cool place. We know Pretty most much, of the people, yeah. we know every we know the owner, we know everybody that uh, works there, and we know most of the people that hang out there regularly. So we don't worry about it as much. Um, but I do know several girls that have been dosed there, not recently, yeah. but you know, in the past few years. I think the last time I was dosed there was probably four or five years ago. Remember but it's she, happened to me twice. Remember when Tori got dosed? That's right. Me, you, and her boyfriend had to drag her out of there, and she was uh, sitting, she ended up just collapsing and sitting on the sidewalk. Everybody's out there, and she's going, I'm so sorry, I'm so, so I was like, okay, baby, we had to, we had to put her That's in the car. That's right, I'd and forgotten about that. she had only had that. like two or three drinks. Yeah. And like I said, the same thing happened to me. I was on yeah. my first drink. Yeah. I don't even, which I don't even think I finished. Right. And I just immediately, all I remember sitting on the bench going, wow, I'm really sleepy. Yeah. And then right. all of a sudden, my head just went, and I just fell. And- at that time, in the media, there was a lot of stuff about date rape drugs. Yeah. Well, they had guys out there, some losers out there, thinking that they were reliable enough to just use. The dumb thing about the time it happened to me, though, was that, I mean, I was clearly with people. Yeah. You know, I was mar- I was with my ex-husband. We were yeah. with a, another friend, a, a female friend. Everybody we knew that got dosed was with somebody at yeah. the time. It's like, why did you think? So, obviously, as soon as I passed out, uh. you know, my husband at the time and my friend, like, carried me out to yeah. my car, you know, and they drove me home. So, I don't know what this person was trying to accomplish. I don't know. It was just some loser. I guess. They're kind of like serial rapists. They don't think reasonably or rationally. They just, I, I want that you. woman. I'm going to give, I'm going to put this in her drink and she'll leave with me. Well, that's kind of an unrealistic expectation. Well, yeah. The girl collapses and her friends carry her out of there. Of that's course. what happens. And very rarely do girls go out to bars by themselves. No, they're for always sake, Mostly for that very right. reason. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not saying I've gone to a bar by myself a couple yeah. of times, but usually it's. I'm not going to go unless I know that people I know are going to be there. Right. And I don't go to places that I don't. That I've never been to before by myself. I would never fucking do that. Right. I mean, you know, I figured the, the place we go, it's, it's a safe, safe right. place. Because I know everybody that But all it is, it takes one lunatic in there with that with, with delusions of grandeur and some chemicals in his pocket. Yeah. But this, take it back to the devil's breath. I'm guaranteeing you the devil's breath is going to be just something like, like a roofie. Like a roofie. Right. And like I said... You know, and there's nothing bad about that. It's just I don't like this kind of. I mean, and even Vice kind of overhyped it a little bit. I think it's hyped by calling it world's scariest drug. And even at the beginning, he said it's like the worst roofie times a million. See, that seems a little hyperbolic. 
It's like a roofie. It's probably a little bit worse than a roofie. Maybe it's stronger. I don't yeah. think it's... Depends on how concentrated it is, how much dosage you had, right. and how little resistance you have. Right. I mean, I would think that a person that probably has never had any contact with any kind of drug, and then they get hit with that, that might be very disturbing to them because they wouldn't recognize what's happening. Yeah, they wouldn't know what was happening. Right. And like I said, it, yeah, it's upsetting. I mean, yeah. I was upset when I was doing So you just pass right out and you yeah. don't know what the fuck happened to you. Yeah, like uh, at the time I got dosed, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that I got really mad over little things. Yeah, and I didn't know and what was that, going and on. And I wanted so to like, physically fight. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is the matter no, with you? Yeah, and it yeah. wasn't until it kind of wore off. I was like, that wasn't alcohol. No. But I knew I knew enough to get out of here. I said, we got to get out of here. I yeah. got to get out of here. Yeah, because we left before the show yeah. was even over. I was only in there for what? Half hour? It was a little bit longer. Hour? Than, yeah, maybe like an hour. Yeah, and that's not that's not normal. Usually no. we're out till 2, two, two o'clock. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was very it strange. It was unusual. So I think that was... And like I said, I've never seen you act like that. No, since. I've never acted like that. <clears throat> and... But that was interesting. If, if you had been dosed, that's interesting how that affected you. Because yeah. normally, like I said, it would just knock you right out. Or right. make you like really like... Ooh. Well, you know, my metabolism is a little bit different than other people. You know, yeah. it might have been a fight or flight response. Yeah, you might have been like trying to fight it trying off. Trying to fight it, it off. Just, so it was just... Right. Like, ah, 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 you know? Yeah. Yeah, because you just turned into like yeah. a raging oh, yeah. psycho. Yeah. Which was very scary. Yeah. And, and after a few minutes, I go, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Friday. I drove back. You did, yeah. I drove back when I was in... in no, I, no, I, no. I think no. I drove. You drove back. Yeah, because okay. I remember when I yeah. Got, when how we many got times does that happen? That's never happened. Yeah, because I don't usually drive. I hate driving. No, that's never <laughs> happened. Okay, so so that's that's got to be what that was. We were just talking about that the other day. Yeah. When we were uh, get talking about doing this show. Yeah. But uh, actually, we're probably getting close toward the end. Yeah. I know we didn't really, you know, we didn't really like definitively come to any conclusion. Did we but no, this? But nobody, like I said, I think. A lot of the stories about the zombification yeah. are probably exaggerated. I think it's bunk. And I think people are conflating it, like I said, with Serpent yeah. and Rainbow. Because yeah. that was exactly the first thing I thought of. They said, oh, when they're blowing the powder in people's faces, I was like, oh, Serpent yeah. and Rainbow, and turning them right. into zombies. Right. I was like, I think that's where that idea came from. Yeah, pretty much debunked this whole thing about just wiping your face with it, smelling it, or just, blowing yeah, it in your face. It's not, the dose will not be enough. That drug dealer himself said that. Oh, and also it doesn't smell like anything. Like the the drug itself doesn't have a, a taste yeah. or an odor. The process of refining it might leave, might, give might it leave some. a chemical odor. Uh, so the the this blowing it in your face or wiping it or smelling it, uh, it's not going to be enough. All right. Uh, this whole thing about being an ultra passive zombie, I guarantee you that that is going to be a um, uh, what do you call it? That's not going to be a reliable. That might result. be a case by case basis. You, that other drug dealer said that his friend it had no effect on him until they had just kept dosing him and dosing him until he died. Yeah. All right. So I mean, the shit is what they're describing is something similar to the other things that they other date rape drugs. Yeah. It may just be a little more concentrated. Yeah. Or it I mean, might like have I a slightly said, different property. It's bad enough. I don't think it's anything to worry about. Right. It's bad enough like a roofie yeah. will just knock you out and people yeah. can do whatever the fuck they want to. They just take your wallet, they right. rape you or whatever, and then they just leave you and you don't remember who did it. Right. You know, so you can't really report it or you don't remember what happened to you. Let that's bad enough. Yeah. And honestly, that's all like if you're a criminal, that's really all you need. You don't really yeah. need yeah, it'd be harder to, you know, go to an ATM if you want to yeah. go to ATM and clean out their whole bank account. But I mean you can take their wallet, you can take their right. credit cards, you can do all that shit. Anyway, yeah. when they're unconscious. If it was an as an effective zombie maker as they say, intelligence agencies would be using it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. If if it was like yeah. a reliable mind control drug, oh, yeah. yeah, it would be everywhere. They'd be using it as a truth serum. Because it's a common plant. Yeah. yeah. It's a common plant. They'd be using it as a truth serum and all different ways you could use a drug like that. And they don't use that drug. Yeah. They they're more likely to use sodium pentothal on you. Yeah, because that's more reliable, more, more reliable. effective. And I've, even that is not a reliable truth serum. There, as far as I know, I like I've many yeah. years ago I read a book that was just called Mind Control and it was all yeah. about those kind of experiments. And they said honestly, there isn't one that's completely reliable. One one of the CIA reports that I had heard about, they said that one of the most reliable truth terms is just alcohol. You get the guy in a good mood, you, you have a good time with him, and you just get him drunk, and he'll start spilling. And his he'll guts. just start talking about yeah. anything you want. Yeah, right. yeah. He'll start spill, spilling so you don't really guts. need a drug for you that. Don't really need. Like I said, time. that's not real reliable either because you don't fucking know what that. You know, but you know, I don't. I don't think that. And actually, the book I read about it, they they kind of said, well, there isn't one that's a hundred percent 
reliable. You can never know if that person is telling the truth or if they're making some stuff up or exaggerating things. Because you know com- what people do. And as common as that drug is in Colombia, there would be more stories yeah. than we could actually dig up. Yeah. You know, most of the stories that we dig we dug up on this are kind of across the board. ODs. Yeah. Guys ODing on it. You right. Know, they just died. Right. Uh, or just waking up and all their shit was gone out of their beat up. And they were, yeah, or they yeah. were beat up. Or you could were... do that with any drug. Yeah, that's what I mean. You could do right. that with pretty much anything. You could right. do that if you gave people enough alcohol. Yep. Because that makes you sleepy too. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't think it's categorically any different than anything else you could use no. for nefarious purpose no. of that nature. No. I wouldn't worry about getting being turned into a zombie with a no. Buy that one. But still, watch your drinks, everybody. Yeah, watch your drinks. <laughs> I mean, yeah. watch your drinks for other shit. Not just scopolamine. There's all kind of crap people could be putting in there. Yeah. But, you know. Anyway, that's uh, we're getting to the end of the show. So we will kind of wrap things up. Um, yeah, well, hopefully it was an in, at least an entertaining show. Yeah. We, you know, yeah. we just wanted to shoot the shit. Entertaining drug show. <laughs> that's the entertaining drug show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's going to be our offshoot channel. The entertaining yeah. drug show. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. You can if you want. But uh, so anyway, uh, like I said, Project Entertainment Network, on which our audio podcast is hosted. They have a Patreon. Go to the Patreon. Give them a buck. Give them two bucks, whatever. And they'll give you some free shit. Also, if you uh, want to buy some t-shirts from us that have our cool ass logo on them yeah. or have some of our cool show I still like that Vril shirt. I'm gonna, I still I know. love that I'll get you one. I'll get yeah, you one. Yeah, I need one. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to make some. And hey, maybe now I can make a devil's breast t-shirt. That would be awesome. Yeah, I should do it. With, with the pretty flower on it. The flower <laughs> is very pretty. That's why some people have them in their yards because the yeah. tree is so beautiful. They look like little bells or like little... Yeah. Trumpets, you know. That's why they call me Angel's Trumpet. Put a devil's face on there and it's blowing, blowing like white smoke out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's pretty rad with like a zombie on the other end going, whoa, yeah, whoa. yes, I will do whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I'm making that shirt now. Okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, so if you want a t-shirt, go to zazzle.com slash 13 o'clock and there's five different shirts there. And also if you like our show, subscribe to our YouTube channel or go to our Facebook page or our Twitter, which are both 13 o'clock podcasts and go give us yeah. a like or give us a follow or what have you. Podcasts are doing good. The YouTube show is going, doing good. We're almost at 200 viewers or 200 subs. Uh, uh, what, a podcast doing good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty podcast good. doing good. It depends on the subject, but right. you know, we just, like it's I said, I think I mentioned on the show last week, we just kind of do subjects that we kind of pull out of our asses and are kind of interested <laughs> in. So, uh, you know, if some people like them, some people don't like them, whatever. There was we a good suggestion kinda... the other day. They Somebody asked for a show on uh, Crowley. We should do one on Alistair That's a Crowley. good idea. Yeah, I think we also yeah. wanted to do one on the skull experiments as well. That's yeah, another skull, thing yeah. we were talking about. So, and yeah. uh, we have a guest that wants to come on. Oh, that's they, right. I forgot. Who they did an episode on Paranormal Witness with this person. Yeah. Okay. And this uh, person has not really spoken publicly or done a public show since the Paranormal Witness show came out. And it's one of our favorite episodes. Episodes. Yeah, yeah that was a good episode. Yeah, I'm not going to name any names, but that person knows, who's, knows who they are. They are also a subscriber. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, so we might be so doing We hope a to show have you on in a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah, that will be good. Mm-hmm. So that'll do it for episode 22, The Devil's Breath. Yes. Woo-hoo. And uh, see you guys next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.